All right, it's another day in the garage here. And uh, check it. So yes, after much debating with Tony, I did decide it is a good idea for me to redo my front axle right now just because I have all this room where the engine isn't sitting to uh, mock up and build. And it's just easier to work on right now and stuff. So I ended up was able to uh, punch out four rivets on either side and take out a couple screws and I can take out my full, look how greasy and grimy this is, but I can take out my full front axle here. I'm gonna put that into a whole different mower and that's easy to do now because I can uh, reinforce this all, uh, get rid of a slop that I built or that I uh, created with uh, abuse and uh, put this in another mower that's not musty because uh, Musty's gonna be getting a custom front axle. I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna build it myself. But this is weird. Musty uh, hasn't been down to this in a while. And if I'm just looking at this through the camera, wow, that's nuts. I love it, I love it. I love custom. All right, so as you can see, the front axle's out, which is like, again, I'm just, it's weird. Cause like Musty just wasn't at this level and I didn't think I'd be here even though I should have been here already, but we're here now. <laughs> Anyways, so the idea of the front axle upgrade is that I think I can build a better front axle than the stock one or the one that I've had to modify already. Which I think I can. I think my fabrication skills have grown up that I think I can do it. So I'm going to take out the challenge, whoop to do Anyways, the other challenge I want to do is my front axle sits, um, as you can see probably right here, there's four little holes where the, I've grinded the frame. My axle sat just in front of that. And I want to get an extra maybe two to three, four inches in front of that so this front axle beam that I got here this is just this is what I am going to be using it's kind of like a 2x4 uh, 3 16 uh, piece of metal or a quarter or yeah 3 16 sorry and uh, I, that's what I'm going to start with but you can see that this is way up further in my frame line and uh, originally that would be back like here and I'm thinking this is actually even going to move fo more forward up so I'm thinking it'll be somewhere uh, like think of this as one more 2x4 length in front uh, but for mock-up reasons, I'm just looking at it now. But there's a lot of challenges I'm going to get faced with that. i got to build and strengthen up this front of the frame because this was not made to have all that extra force in front because the muffler actually used to sit through here, so I have two big holes. Anyways, I'm going to brace that, and I'm going to have to brace the underside as well because uh, that's where the front axle itself is going to get mounted to. Yes, I am doing a swing, swing beam setup, which is the identical to fr factory front axle. But I'm going to be building it a lot stronger with bigger spindles, uh, stronger steering arms, um, and a way better articulation spot because I think that's just going to be a way stronger spot point, um, and I'll be able to grease it. And it'll just—I think it's just a better way of going. And I'm going to give it a shot because I don't see anyone else uh, doing that kind of stuff. I see a lot of people uh, putting in like uh, like the Ford has a uh, cast iron uh, front axle. Same with like a lot of the bigger GTs. Uh, Craftsman GTs like 6,000s, the 5,000s, and I think some of the 4,000s even. Anyways, they've been putting a lot of those front axles in because that's a solid solid front axle. There's nothing wrong with that. I just think I can build it better. So, I'm going to do that. That's what we do at the custom shop here, so it is what it is. Anyways, there's a lot to get done, and uh, I just want to let everyone know that like, I'm going to be going hard at this, but I only got like two weeks here because uh, May Long is coming up like fast, and like any other build it takes time so let's get to it I'm gonna show you guys what I do and how I do it like always anyways let's get to it like I keep saying all right so if you're looking at it to get up close here so the other thing is one more thing I forgot to mention is I'm also adding width to the front now this the only downside I hate adding width is I crawl through literally any freaking hole I can I fit through any amount of trees any stumps rocks anything my wheelbase is just such a good uh, length for uh, width from side to side, not length this way. This way, I need to get more front axle up here because uh, I'm tending to flop a lot or flip my front end up or lift my front end up. Sorry. With adding a couple inches to either side of the front axle, that will give me more width along the front. So more width, more track this way on the mower here. All right, so if you're following the channel, you probably can understand by the videos and the pictures that we're building two mowers at the same time here, or at least I am. I got the help from the boys when I can, and they can. Anyways, 820 swap in the peerless. What the f yeah. 
So if you're watching the Magnum build, you're seeing that the 820's been getting done well, which is awesome. And if you're watching the Musty build, you're seeing that I'm slowly getting work done, which kind of sucks, so I need to get done fast. Uh, we got a pretty tight deadline in like two weeks. We're going on a pretty awesome mower trip and camping trip with the girlfriends and the friends and uh, the crew, so we're gonna be going pretty good, having a good time. Anyways, lots of work to get done, so I need to get done fast. So yesterday I cranked out a bunch of work, and I'll show you guys what I got done here. But as you can see, nothing's looked too different. But uh, that's because I haven't got anything actually on the frame yet. Let's get to it. All right, so as you can see on the bench here, we got some parts. No, I didn't buy these from the store. These are made here in the uh, OKOM shop on the lathe. All right, so let's get into this. I'm gonna set the camera up and I'll show you guys my parts. All right, so there's a couple different parts that need to be built on the mower. As you can see here, I got a couple angle iron, quarter inch angle iron, uh, about 13 inches long, whatever. And I got a laid down piece that, uh, so I'll explain this a little better here. These two pieces are gonna get welded into my frame, upside down, kind of like that. Sorry, kind of like that, back to back in the frame. And then I'm gonna be running this little Jimmy John that I, that I built. That's gonna actually sit on my axle, which is, adjustable by the way. So this is my articulation point and I'll be running it all the way down at the, beginning, at the beginning, but by adding washers under here or nuts or whatever, I can adjust my flex. Um, you'll be seeing in the videos down the way, I'll be adding some shocks to this, but anyways. When these two are in the frame, like so. That locks in the front axle with this giant bolt I got off the semi truck. Trailer. So that should be very strong. So that sits in there with these two pieces on either side. I'll show you that once it's actually welded in. But a lot of work just went into getting this stuff done because I tried actually, well, I did lay down all these pieces to make them nice and clean. And uh, I measured everything to make sure everything's nice and straight. I got a, uh, if you're wondering how long my front axle is without spindles on, this is 25 inches. So that's pretty wide, but uh, I'm going for a wider bill on this one. So. Yeah. So one thing I should mention here is unlike quads and uh, trucks and uh, most 4x4 or even two-wheel drive off-road vehicles operate off more than one articulation spot. So. Thus, this spot needs to be very well uh, built because this one little spot right here with this big giant bolt going through it is going to hold up all my front end weight, all my weight. When I do a big wheelie and come down hard, this spot takes it. That's why I did a nice job of welding and I'll actually be reinforcing that a little bit more. But that's why I'm using such heavy duty metals and beefy and making it such like a, a beefy rig. <laughs> Keep saying beef because you need to build it strong. If you like off-road mowing and like you go pretty hard, we go really hard out here, then uh, we just constantly run into uh, breaking front axle stuff. And especially if you're doing lifts to them, you'll definitely get into that. So building strong center articulation spot is very important and critical to the build. So. That is just something I thought I should explain because a lot of you might be asking like, well, I don't even know what y'all might be asking, but a lot of y'all ask stupid questions, so figured I'd just go into a little more depth of that. Just to give you guys a quick idea of what I meant here. So these two pieces are in my frame, the frame sitting here, and then this has my center I-beam on it and that articulates. So from underneath here, that's what you'll see and you'll be seeing that. Not bad, eh? All right, after much measuring, we got the first piece in. As you can see from the top frame there, not much from the bottom side here, but I'll get you up in there. So I still have lots of uh, bracing due. Obviously you can see this little gap in here. I'll be filling this in with some metal, but uh, you can see basically what will be happening. So tack welded in there. Now I gotta figure out my spacing. Put this other one up in there like so. so my front axle went from being here, this was about center, to uh, about center is going to be basically right above this bolt, right below the bolt, right about here. So that's about another 
three inches, three and a half inches difference. Okay, let's get more work done though. All right, getting back to Musty here. Sorry again, this, these videos will be posted uh, after May Long, obviously. I just got way too much stuff going on for May Long, like you can see. But uh, Musty is just like, there's so much work to be done. So let's go over some work. So as you can see, I got my front axle. Obviously no spindles, no steering, no nothing. And it's Friday and we're leaving on Saturday of next weekend. So I got eight days counting a day. Like, oh, I don't even want to talk about that, okay? Anyways, so what now I'm doing right now is I'm building my own spindles and steering arms. You'll see how that kind of gets going once I actually get going on it. But I'm just starting here. You can see my center articulation point and how it can be adjustable. Awesome. So I'm going to drill out these holes to 5 eighths and get my uh, locking bolt in there. And then I'm going to start building uh, C-channel arms that sit on either side of these. And then I'm going to hopefully try and get a thrust needle bearing on the top and then just a normal uh, bearing on the bottom. And then that will be able to take uh, abuse and uh, steer very nice. All right, let's do this. Sorry, I'm stressing. Y'all should be too, because the May Long, you should be riding your mower. <laughs> 